Well, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me to Malibu. It's my first time. I love this city. And my idea during the next 20 minutes is to share with you some uh, ideas about how to build that place in a digital uh, area that we're living with. I think you will find a copy of the presentation somewhere in the cloud later on, so take as many notes as you want, uh, but you will have access to my presentation. You will see links on the bottom to the examples I'm going to share with you. It's been a long day, and I think most of us have realized that technology is changing everything in our lives. It's changing the way we discover information, it's changing the way we consume information, and it's changing the way we share information. And I think all of us have realized that to some degree, more or less, but everyone has come to terms that technology is changing the way we discover, the way we consume books, and the way we share the experience, not the archives. There was a round table about piracy, sharing the experience, sharing the experience that we had read in those books. So how can libraries be useful to readers and writers in this new scenario? Do we need these buildings? How can we make those buildings useful? That's one of the things I want to share with you. So what I've done in order to make my idea some kind of a structure, I have divided the ideas in three phases. Before we go into the building, how do we use technology to decide if I want to be at the public library of Malibu or not? What activities are there? What kind of content I'd be able to access? So what kind of technologies I use as a librarian or as a user before deciding? Then, once I'm in the building, what kind of technologies I can use to enhance the experience of being inside the building? And you will see a lot of ideas in that sphere. And basically, what I'm going to suggest to you is that you look at retail. Retail has had a lot of experience of using technology to enhance the in-store experience. And then when I leave the building, what can I do as a librarian to continue sharing the experience? So that person goes back home or goes back to work and tells friends in social networking or through other te uh, technologies that you will see in order to tell them there is something that you have to go and see in that specific building. This uh, experiences that I'm going to share with you are applicable to any other kind of cultural entities. You can use it in museums, you can use it in bookstores, you can use it in many other places because they're applicable to everyone. So let's start with the discovery phase. And in this one, I had a lot of ideas and I had to choose two because I'm going to be very respectful with the timing, okay? And basically, you have to ask yourself two key questions, okay? First one is, are you, are you websites, your library websites, web-friendly? You know how impatient we are with your smartphones. If you're not able to search and find your content and your activities through your smartphone, you're going to go out very, very fast of that website. This is the latest data of Europe. We had had last year 400% increase in search via smartphones. How many of you have a smartphone? Probably most of you. In Spain, we have more smartphones than Spaniards. We love technology. Okay? We might have not a lot of money this year, but we do not go with our smartphone. And this implies that you as a librarian or a cultural professional, you have to redesign your website with this new thing called responsive design. Basically, it's technology as a service. It provides access in a friendly way to your users, because if not, they're going to go away. And why are they going to go away? Because you're not keeping their fingers happy. One of the things you're going to think about when you do anything on the website is, are they keeping their fingers of the users happy? Can they move around the screen? Can they do things? Can they touch and go away? If not, you're not doing the right thing. We're moving from a text-based society to an image society. Everything is based on image. So one thing that you also have to do now is redesign your websites with a more image-based backgrounds. And I have put here many examples of museums, magazines, newspapers. Even the latest Windows 8 design is all icon-driven, image-driven. And think about this. Is my website image-friendly, website-friendly? Because if not, you have a problem from the beginning. If they don't discover you, they won't come to you. Only the people that they know you. And when those people go away, you will find your place empty, okay? So start adding sounds and movement to your images. There's technologies, as I said, there's all kinds of links that you can go there and visit what I'm talking about, or dynamic book trailers, you know, things that make users happy before coming to your building.
Let's go to the second phase. Okay, now people are within the building. What can I do in order to enhance their experience so they really enjoy not only being there physically, but also with technology around them? And as I said before, look into the retail uh, sector. They've done tremendous things about using technology in the stores. What can you do? I put here several samples. You can click on the screens later on. You will go directly to the samples. These are, you know, like iPads on the stores, touch screens on the stores. Take them into your li uh, libraries and bookstores, and you will see people going in depth into the books, reading reviews, reading comments from friends on different websites. QR codes. They're becoming more and more. We've seen them even you know, everywhere we go. Uh, it provides not only information about the book that you're going to read, but also links the digital version with the physical version. Maybe the person who's coming into your building already is a reader on a device and is looking at the physical book but wants to take away the digital version. If you have a QR code, it can lend away the digital version, okay? Also, one of the greatest things about QR codes and technologies around them is it allows you to take your library outside your building. You can take it anywhere in Malmo, anywhere in Sweden, anywhere you want to, to the airport, to the train stations. This is something that the libraries of Barcelona did uh, last autumn. They took the library everywhere across the, the city. One of the things that you should also be looking into, and, and you can uh, uh, you know, later on search, is this whole geolocation technology base. They're great in terms of providing an enhanced experience within the building. It tells who else is in the building and who else is looking at different things. And not only about the people, but also about the content. This technology, when you look into, into the link, it will take you to this technology and it tells you books that are related to that specific space. So I'm coming to Malbo and I want to read about books about Malbo, and this technology will tell me which books about Malbo are the ones I should be looking at. Another thing that I suggest to you is creating an app to navigate the building. And maybe the building has a lot of, you know, a past history and it has had different uses and you can really recreate a very good experience. And another recommendation I'm giving to you is look into this whole concept of gamification. The museums are really doing a great job about using gamification to increase participation of their users. Increasing participation means coming back to the building. Because every time I come back, there might be the same content, but it's being sorted out in a different way. Because there are games or you know, game, uh, activities related to games that make me that the experience is completely different to the last time I came to it. And the bookseller in London has done a lot of gamification activities around the building itself. Basically, it's do something that every time I come into the building, basically you surprise me. And if you surprise my curiosity, you basically guarantee that we'll come back. Let's go into the third phase. Third phase, as I said, is I leave the building. And now I'm going to share the experience they had within the building and also with the reading of the materials. And here, we really, all of us have to do a better job of what we're doing. This whole recommendation system based on purchase and Lending books that I have, you know, lent before or books that I have purchased before means nothing to the readers because many of us have purchased a book or lent a book and we basically haven't read it. It has dropped off our hands because, you know, the story was not good or someone else gave me another book and that book was better and I dropped the other one. I continued reading the other one. So purchase or lending means nothing to a user, to a reader. And I think you guys, librarians, libraries have to become labs of innovation using all the technologies that are out there in order for you guys to start looking into those services. This is going to be the second theme of today. What services are out there that I can give to my users, to my readers as a librarian? And I just, you know, pinpoint here small demos, book lamps, red mail, you know, there are tons of them. You know, good technologies that allow you to make discoverability, that allows you to make social reading, that allows you to make annotations in a more open way, shared way, you know, uh, social way. Uh, this technology, for example, tells you where the user came from. Maybe that person was reading an article about Snowden and now comes to the library and I can show them books about privacy, I can show them books about internet problems. I mean, knowing where your user came from in the site, you can really give them better service. Or this whole social reading concept is a way to not only discover books, but also a way to enhance the reading experience. 
Reading has always been a social activity, although we supposedly done it in a private way. And my last thought that I, we can bring this for later on for the uh, conversation that we're going to have after we finish the two sessions. You can come to me or ask anyone, but I think this is one of the most crucial things in, in, in my uh, uh, thinking, is that libraries in the 21st century has to become a creation place, not only a place where we sell or learn content from the publishers. Of course, we're gonna continue doing that, but I think libraries in the 21st century have to be a common place where the users create content that they share between each other. And fortunately, there's a lot of new technologies that allow us, us as users, and you are the middleman, you are the place where that activity can happen. And I place here, you know, some of these technologies that are available out there at my suggesting to you, start looking into these technologies that will allow you, you libraries, to make your users creators of the future. These users will be the ones that will be creating the content that the other users will be consuming, or they will be enhancing the content that other users have created. It could be text, it could be movies, it could be music, it could be images, whatever digital content that is co-created by users and consumed by the library users. If you create that platform, you have a future. If not, I think it will be very hard in the digital age to survive. Thank you. Thank you.